Good. So today in our gospel, we have kind of a class given by Jesus, a class that could be called conflict resolution. Because he's giving us this way, this whole formula of how to deal with someone who sins against us, for someone who's hurt us. And it's a really practical way, but it's something that's difficult as well. As I was reflecting on conflict and resolution and how to resolve problems between people and relationships, it made me think of a class that I took in seminary, and it was called Sexuality and Vocation. And in that class, there was a lot of different topics, but one of them was marriage and marital issues, some things that come up with married couples. Because as priests, we oftentimes deal with those sorts of issues, that those sorts of things where couples come to us asking for help. And we also prepare couples for marriage as well. So it's good that we know a little bit about marriage. So in that part of the class, we uh, were to read parts of a book called Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work. Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work. And that was based on uh, a psychiatrist's observations of a bunch of different married couples and how they interact with each other. But then there was one principle, one part of the, the book was called Solve Your Solvable Problems. Solve Your Solvable Problems, meaning that if there are things that are becoming issues between the two of you and a married couple that are not too big of a deal, that really can be solved without a whole lot of heartache, you know, it's not something as big as like changing your religion or something, that you should try and solve those together. And then the author gives different ways that he's seen that have worked with married couples. So how to approach the other one with non-accusatory language. Instead of coming to them and saying, hey, you know what you did to me? You didn't wash the dishes last night and I'm upset about it. And it's all that you language. Instead, he calls it softening your startup. So say, you know, I wish that... um, it makes me feel bad when you, when you don't help with the dishes after, after dinner and that kind of a thing. But I thought as I was reading that book, the, the thought that kept reoccurring in my head over and over as someone who's not going to be married is that this is good advice for anyone. This is good. It's good for me. It's good for anyone, not just married couples. And I said last night that I'm going to have Father Allen read that book as well so then we can get along really well. <laughs> but I thought he was smiling beneath his mask, but he was frowning, I guess. Or something. But I think it was very practical, basic information, basic uh, advice for married couples. And I think the same is true of what Jesus gives us today in our gospel. Basic, practical advice for how to deal with someone who's hurt us. He says that if someone has sinned against you, go first to talk to that person, to your brother or sister, and tell them their fault face to face. And then if that doesn't work, to bring along two or three more, in that way that you can establish all the facts together. And if that ceases to work as well, then you should go bring them to the church, it says in our gospel. What it means is the community of believers, to really bring that our belief system into the whole thing because that should be where we take reference from. So if the Christian community into that, hopefully that becomes a greater impetus to bring about a resolution. But he basically is telling us that our responsibility is to go to that person who's hurt us and to be able to resolve that conflict. But we know that it's difficult to do that. Think to yourself, what is your first reaction when someone else sins against you? What's the first thing you do when someone sins against you? Do you want to go first and go talk to that person? Not me. Not usually. My first reaction would be to go tell someone else what this person did to me. And to talk badly about that person. Say, you know what they did to me? It kind of soothes something within us to do that. Or perhaps our other first reaction is not to go to that person with, kind or humble words, but to go and start yelling at them. Get in their face and say, you did this to me and I didn't like it. Some form of that. Neither of those is really going to that person to talk to them, to really offer something to them. So we know this is a difficult thing for us to do. It's not easy to go and resolve conflicts with other people. 
But how do we do that then? Jesus tells us that this is possible to do, so how do we do it? I think that St. Paul gives us that answer in our second reading today. He says at the beginning of what we heard, he said, Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for love is the fulfillment of the law. As Christians, we are called to approach one another with love, always with love. In our Catholic tradition, the definition of love is willing the good of the other. Willing the good of the other. So it doesn't consist in a feeling or in something that we might see in a movie, but it is an action in our willingness to will the good of the other. So if we were to approach someone who's hurt us with love, that means that we would be approaching them not for our sake, but for theirs, for their good. Because if they've really sinned against us, then they have something that needs to be, they need help. They need to be reconciled, not only be to ourselves, but to God. So we go to that person with love, saying, please, we need to be reconciled here. We have to go to them with humility and basically to say, I want your good and not to be going there seeking our own good. It's interesting in that book that I mentioned at the beginning, Those Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work, the author explained that as he had observed all of these couples, there were many of them who stayed together and many of them that got divorced. But what was really interesting was that between those two groups, those who stayed together fought and argued just as much as those who got divorced. They fought and argued just as much. And so he explained the difference was basically that the ones who stayed together approached each other in love when they had arguments. They approached each other trying to seek a compromise between the two of them, not trying to accuse the other, but to try and help the other grow, and really to make their relationship grow together. So that's our call today. For anyone in our lives that we feel has hurt us, to be able to approach them with love. And we can do that. We can extend our hand to others with love and mercy, because that's what our Lord and Savior has done for us. It's what he continues to do for us here on this altar today.